Coast Coast Studios in Oklahoma City. You're watching the Press Row. Press Row is brought to you by Cox High Speed Internet. I'm Jenny Carlson. He's Barry Trammell, and we're here to do the inbox. Barry, going to check our emails and see what people want to know. Let's start with Lonnie. Lonnie asks, did Coach Stoops play Landry Jones the total game against Ball State because OU is slipping in the AP poll? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think Bob Stoops uh, played Landry Jones three through three quarters because he's uh, trying to attempt fate. He's up, uh, you know, 172 to three, and he's still playing his starting quarterback. I don't know why Bob does this. I'll say this for him. He always does it. Yeah. I mean, he's not, he's not inconsistent. Yeah. You know he's going to play. So uh, I think he's tempting fate. I wouldn't do it. But Bob plays that quarterback at least through three quarters, regardless of the, of the record, the standing in the season, the, whatever. He's yeah. going to do it. We know he's going to do it, regardless of, of how things are going. And, you know, I don't understand it. I would want to get those guys in there, those younger guys. But yet, you watch, and rarely has this hurt Oklahoma in terms of getting a starter hurt, and rarely has it hurt them in terms of bringing in a new guy and getting him ready to play. So there's really no reason for them to change and clearly they haven't. If Landry Jones is in there against Ball State that late. He hasn't, he hasn't, it hadn't cost him yet. All right, let's go to the inbox again. RJ asks, curious about your opinion on Alabama. After watching them against Florida, I'm convinced that no one can beat them. Barry, what do you think? Well, I think Alabama's beatable, for crying out loud. They, they had a great team last year playing at home and they're up 24-0 in the second half on Auburn and they lost. Yeah. So, Alabama's beatable. That doesn't mean they're gonna lose. They're really good. <laughs> Uh, they uh, they uh, host LSU. I think Alabama probably is going to the national title game. And then uh, they get to play, uh, if they do that, they get to play in New Orleans. They're going to be very tough to beat, but they could lose. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think they could lose. I think LSU is a team that could beat them. But, you know, obviously uh, Alabama is a team that looks pretty strong. Now against Florida, Florida plays the whole second half without John Brantley, the quarterback. He's hurt. So I think that sort of helped Alabama's cause, but clearly you go to places like Florida and win, you know, you beat good teams. That, you know, obviously the resume out of the SEC, it's going to be better because the teams are better. I, I, that, that's a great team. I, I think LSU might get them though. All right, we're moving on to Brandon's question in the inbox. Brandon asks, why aren't more people talking publicly about how poorly David Bourne, the OU president, performed during the recent realignment issues? The truth is Bourne got way in front of his skis on this matter. And uh, uh, without an ironclad guarantee from the Pac-12 that they would just take two Oklahoma teams. Well, I think he's right. I do say this. I think it's been talked about quite a bit. I mean, I think David Bourne yeah. has sort of been, uh, sort of been the story of this. And it, you know, I think it's probably David Bourne's lowest point in terms of public perception as the OU president. I think he's uh, hurt his reputation a lot. I think he did get. Uh, I think he did do some gamesmanship. Tried to leverage Texas. Texas uh, called his bluff, didn't work. I think David Bourne came out looking pretty bad, but I think people are talking about that. Oh yeah, I do too. I, I think there's definitely people out there. Uh, I even, uh, when Missouri had their meeting of their, uh, their university leaders earlier in the week, and some things came out of that that make it look like Missouri's on its way to the SEC. Barry, I saw some things on social media, people, you know, blasting David Bourne and, you know, saying, what, what do you got to say now? So I think people are aware in a way that, you know, they, they see that he made some missteps and now how's he going to react? I don't know. I think it's definitely a, a bad point, though, for if him. He's, if he's got a trick up his sleeve, if he's got an ace in the hole, if he's got something he can do, yeah. uh, I suggest he play it because uh, his uh, his Q rating's pretty low right yeah, now. Yeah, they need some teams. Maybe he's got somebody he can uh, call and bring in. All right, back to the inbox. Jim asks, if you had to pick another program that has the most things in common with OU, who would you say? I'd say Nebraska would be a good one based on national championships and the fact that most of their players come from out of state. I am not going to say Nebraska, although that's not a bad. I think it's pretty clear to me, and, and this came into focus when they played a few years ago. To me, Alabama, yeah. Oklahoma, Alabama have a lot in common. All the national championships, the domination of the conference, uh, an in-state rival, an out-of-state or border state rival, Tennessee in Alabama's case, that they really treasure that rivalry. Uh, I think Alabama, you know, a non-professional state, sorry Thunder, but uh, you know, you're relatively new. The whole state is sort of focused. I think it's Alabama. Yeah, I think Nebraska is a, a good option. You know, Nebraska is a little bit different because it's the school in the state. Obviously, Oklahoma and it has Oklahoma State in its borders as well. So it's a little bit different. You don't have that natural in-state rival. Nebraska draws 
uh, from out of state, but I think a lot of their players, Barry, they come from that area. I mean, you've got a lot of kids from Minnesota, the Dakotas, those sorts of kids that they built around, their, especially their linemen. I think Alabama, and you saw those kindred spirits and those fan bases when they came together for those games a couple years ago. People really appreciated the other because they were so similar. I yeah, think. and they look at their uh, look at the uh, uniforms. I mean, the colors, the crimson, crimson, the two big reds. Oh, you're Nebraska. You get them next to each other. They're not similar colors. You get Oklahoma, Alabama together, even the colors look yeah, alike. It's like synergy. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us on the inbox and on the press row. We appreciate your time. And be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.